Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back. And welcome back to my VMware VCF series. In the last videos that I posted about VMware VCF, I did some preparations for the host, for the network, and DNS there as well. And now it's time to actually install, deploy VMware VCF. We are going to start with importing the Cloud Builder appliance. Let's get into it. And this is the lab environment running my VMs. What I have done is I have created some nested E6i hosts, of course. I already have set up Cloud Builder and am running that uh, because I did some testing previously to make sure that everything is working fine. Now I will show you how to import the Cloud Builder appliance. The Cloud Builder appliance is basically the appliance you need, which will deploy all your VCF infrastructure. You need it to provide, of course, that spreadsheet we talked about. And we're going to do just that in this video and show you how that whole process goes. So you start by importing an OVF template. I already downloaded that OVF template, so I'm going to select a local file, select that Cloud Builder appliance. As you can see here, I'm running that for version 5.1.1 PCF. And click on Next. Give it a name. Select, of course, the location when I, where I want to store it. I will just leave it at that. Click on Next. This is my host I'm running. That's fine. And as you can see here, it has already presented me with some details. You can see the version here as well. You can see also um, some configuration details. Let's click on Next. Accept the license agreement. Click on Next, and then you have to choose a storage for the appliance. I'm using Thin Provision, of course, because this is just a lab environment. Thin Provision is fine. And then click on Next. Provide it with some networking. I'm using the PCF uh, virtual switch. You can check out my previous videos where I showed you how I set up my networking for my lab environment. So this is the destination network I will choose and then click on next. Of course, it says you have to enter some values, otherwise we cannot proceed. So I will enter a admin password. Enter a root password. Just the wrong one. Let me enter that quickly. We can enter a host name. In my case, I'm doing the Cloud Builder 01. Remember that this host name, it needs to reflect that DNS record you created earlier. So enter a IP address. And this also has to be, of course, that IP address relating to this DNS entry. A subnet, this is fine. Let's go the IP address there. Default gateway. And I showed you earlier the network I'm using for my cloud builder. This is a different network. This is basically the LAN network provided by my PFSense. I made sure that it has access, it's routing to all the other networks I specifically set up for VCF, of course. So I will use it as a DNS server there as well. A host name. So this is my DNS zone. This is PCF. I will leave this blank, the search path, and of course, enter the NTP server in your network. This is the same NTP server your ESXi hosts have. The Cloud Builder will use it. It's also entered in that spreadsheet we are going to use and provide Cloud Builder with all the input. So click on Next. And if everything is fine, you can click on Finish. And this will take some time because this OVA, this template is quite large, 35 gigabytes. It has a lot of images for deployment of all the VCF components. So this will take some time. All right, so here we are. Cloud Builder appliance is running, up and running. Let's go to the IP address of the Cloud Builder and log in with that admin account you created earlier. You click on Login, you will be presented with a platform choice. I'm going to use, of course, 
VMware Cloud Foundation. And before I click on next, I made sure that I filled out this spreadsheet. This, uh, this is a spreadsheet with all the information you need to supply for the cloud builder. Um, so it can build out that VCF infrastructure. So as you can see here, you need to create or provide some credentials. The root password for the ESXi host, which already are up and running, of course. And then it will deploy vCenter, NSX, and SDDC manager. And you need to supply the passwords you want to it to configure for you on those appliances here as well. As you can see here, there are some password policies involved. Make sure that you are aware of that. And then go to the tab hosts and networks. Make sure that the IP addresses here actually uh, correspond with the ESXi host you're going to use and set up. Of course, your VLANs as well. If you uh, don't know exactly what you need to adjust here, check that video I made uh, about filling in this spreadsheet for the host and network part. And then we have the deployment parameters, of course. These are naming conventions, IP addresses for DNS servers, your DNS zone, etc. Make sure that everything here is um, supplied correctly and is within the IP scopes you are using in your different networks. If you've done that, save the sheet. And we can then go back to the Cloud Builder, click on Next, accept the prerequisites review, click on Next. Of course, it will tell you you need to download the complete workbook. That's that spreadsheet. I already did that, so I will click on Next. I will select the spreadsheet I'm going to use. It will now upload it to the Cloud Builder appliance and see if everything is within spec to start deployment. It seems like everything is fine, so we'll click on Next. And then the Cloud Builder will run through the validation process of so validating different items before it actually starts the deployment. This is a very good um, overview of how your installation will go. If there are certain things you need to take care of before starting the deployment, they will pop up here. Make sure that you're aware of them, uh, fix it, uh, restart the validation process so you can have a, a smooth sailing for the VCF installation, so to speak. Let's give this a minute to complete and then we can continue. And here we are. There are some errors found. If I scroll to the list, I can see that there are actual warnings. And because this is a lab environment, and uh, I know that this is fine for my lab environment, if you have warnings in your deployment, make sure you understand what's happening, why it's, it's happening, and if it's safe to proceed, of course. If there are actual errors in here in the status, it will not let you acknowledge them because you need to basically fix them uh, in order to proceed. But for now, these are just minor warnings, so to speak. This is fine. So I click on Acknowledge and I will click on Next. And the first step is deploying the SDDC. Click on Deploy SDDC. And let's wait for that process to start. And this is the screen which you will see when deployment is started of your VCF infrastructure. This can be a lengthy process. Um, it can take a couple of hours to finish, actually. You will see that the screen is actually going through all the processes of importing keys, uh, configuring items, and you can scroll down and see what it's actually doing. So as we can see, it started the VSAN configuration at the moment. So because this is a lengthy process, we will let it finish. And finally, the VCF deployment is finished. Everything has been installed successfully. You can see it says as well, deployment of VMware Cloud Foundation is successful. On my lab environment, on my system, it took about two and a half hours from start to finish to get all the components installed and set up. Now let's click on finish. And then we can see that it says SDDC deployment complete. We are in business. So we can click on launch SDC manager. And as you can see here, it is presenting me with a self-signed certificate. And 
take note that everything is going to be accessed using that DNS, the, those DNS names that we have set up earlier. Let's accept the certificates because they are still self-signed certificate. And let's log in here. This is the redirection to vCenter. And remember, we entered the password for this in our spreadsheet. So use that password to log in. And it's redirecting me back to the SDDC manager. So from here, I can take next steps to actually do kind of day two operations like deployment of workloads, domains, etc. Because if I go to the dashboard now, let's see what is running. Let's click on apply here for the customer program. This is what has been deployed. You can see the CPU RAM usage here, of course, and the different components here as well. If we go to the workload domains, you will see that there is only one workload domain provisioned. Uh, that's the management workload domain. So we need to create our workload domains, which will, which will actually contain all workloads. But that's a video for another day. If we take a quick look in the vCenter, which is deployed as part of the SDDC setup and the VCF deployment, we can see that if I go to the inventory view, I can see that there are several components set up here. You can see, for example, that we have a management setup with the SDDC manager and the vCenter in there. We also have several networking components. These are my NSX uh, deployments, my NSX appliances, which are actual appliances being deployed. And of course, if I go to the networking part, you will see that there are several network components deployed here as well. The naming of these components, of course, they are the same as the ones you entered in that spreadsheet. So from a first look, everything has been set up perfectly fine. Everything is running. And we are good to go for day two operations for VCF. And now we have VMware VCF 5.1.1 up and running. It is ready for our day two operations. We can now start creating workload domains in there, which will host our actual workloads like applications or servers or VDIs. And taking starting to take advantage of all the VCF features it brings for our virtual infrastructure. And in the next videos in the VCF series, I will show you how to get there, the day two operations, what to consider, how to set up different things and what choices you will, can make for configuring the different components within VCF. But that's for another day. If you have followed my VMware VCF series, then you know that deploying VCF, it can be a demanding and challenging task, but if you do the preparations well, like I showed you in the previous VMware VCF videos I made, well, deployment should be a breeze. It only takes some time in the end to deploy all the components, get it up and running, and then you're there. So for now, thank you for watching. Don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button below. And if you have comments, leave it in the comment section. I will try to get to them as soon as possible. Take care. See you. Bye.